So when we were working on Napoleon, we were students at BYU. We had no real big budget to make it. It was pretty slim, even though it was such a gift to, to get $200,000 to make a movie, obviously. But we couldn't afford um, proper Hollywood crew or um, equipment. So everything was kind of piecemeal together. For example, our film, we shot on film stock. We had short ends, and people don't really know what this means, but um, films, film stock comes in magazines, and the magazines are 1,000 feet long. And I think, I'm throwing these numbers out like I remember, I used to load cameras, but okay, forgive me if not. Our film stock was all 200 feet or less. So we would be loading and reloading. You could never take long takes with that. So it really, when you realize how limited we were, and like, for example, I don't know how many lenses we had in our camera pack package. I don't know how many lights we had, but everything limited what we could do. And it made for kind of that funny, weird, we didn't have enough film stock to get so much coverage. We didn't have time in the day to get the coverage. And so everything like, and I think Jared really purposely wanted those long, awkward, wide shots, just telling the story as it happened. I think it worked for the story, but those decisions were also influenced by the lack of money. And so I was the costume designer again, because we couldn't afford a real one. And most movies you would buy, you know, or you would, you would take from a rental house multiples of everything, but we had one of each thing because I got them at all the DIs here in town. And so I had to wash, you know, every shirt that Napoleon had and then bring it back to him the next day. So it was just a whole different, weird, charming. We could never do it again like that. It was so charming and goofy, but yeah. You know, this is a funny, lame story, but I was attending BYU and I was an English major and I met my funny, goofy, dorky husband, Jared, and he said, come do film with me. It's so much easier. These are the quote unquote words he said. And he was like, come, come, we just get to watch movies and write about them and make them. So I ended up dual majoring or minoring in film and English and made a bunch of movies with him. And for myself, obviously, that feels like I'm just working with him, but sometimes we made, made them separately. Filmmaking can be seen in three parts, pre-production, production, and post-production. I'll tell you what I hate, post-production. It is very hard and grueling to edit a show and just be in it over and over again. But each one has its own little moment. Um, so I think the favorite part of filmmaking for me is pre-production when you're coming up with the ideas and writing. I think I'm a writer first, a director very second. <laughs> yeah, and I think the funny thing about post-production, it really feels like writing again. It's the same process. You are just rewriting your movie in a different way. And so there is something very bookendish about the two processes. Um, for me, I'm just so burnt out from the project by then and I'm ready to do the next thing. I think to be a good writer, you have to be a good reader. And I'm not saying anything against people who struggle with reading. My own daughter has dyslexia. It's not that you're not a uh, accomplished reader, but you need to enjoy books. I think you need to consume books, consume the written word. Um, I think, you know, some of my best writing comes after reading really inspiring novels, whether they're fiction or nonfiction. And I, and I just, I'm voracious with what I read. I think also to be a good, um, screenwriter, you should consume television and movies a lot. I think that's really a part of it because we're all just kind of reworking everyone else's ideas, unfortunately. It's a medium that's just being redone and redone and redone. Um, so yeah, you need to consume literature and media in all its forms. So my husband and I, we've made quite a few movies at this point. And people ask us all the time, what is your favorite? And there are definitely moments, you know, there's nothing can get better than Nacho Libre for me. The movie's so perfect and, and it, it took our filmmaking to this next level. It's such a fun and perfect little movie. But the truth is, and, and Gentleman Broncos might be my favorite for another reason, but the truth is Napoleon Dynamite is the movie that launched us. It's the most intimate of our movies. I say don't rework other people's stuff. That movie wasn't a reworking. That was just true stories that we were we were telling. We were we were anthropologists in those days just collecting people's stories and we had so many weird relatives and brothers and we just wrote them all down. So yeah, I think Napoleon Dynamite might be my favorite. 
Austin Land was such a gift to do. Um, I had wanted to direct for a long time. I had become friends with Shannon Hale, who was then friends with Stephanie Meyer. It was just like this cool collaboration with women who were making kind of women-centered um, books and stories. And so I just thought it was such a gift and a delight to work with these women. And um, we went to England and shot that in I don't know how many days. It was so fun. It was that giant cast of really funny people and on set it, the energy was really infectious and everyone would kind of one up each other and give me funnier and funnier bits. I loved it. I'm sure they hated it. I loved every second about it. And of course Jennifer Coolidge just like took the cake every time with the funniest line. It was delightful. There was a lot of giggles and um, but directing, first time directing, it was new and nerve wracking. You get better at it every day. But yeah, those first couple days, I think I was just like a shaking mess and pretending like I, you know, you just pretend most of the time. You pretend like you know what you're doing. You pretend like you know what you want. And then by the end, you're like, yeah, yeah, that is what I wanted. So 95 Senses was a project that kind of evolved from COVID to be honest. So the Salt Lake Film Society is um, a film society here in Salt Lake that um, is all about their brick and mortar theaters and getting people in theaters. And Tori Baker, the producer and um, president of Salt Lake Film Society, she'd thought we need to pivot during COVID. People aren't coming to the movies. And so they started this very cool media program that would, and it's a complete nonprofit that pairs filmmakers who are in the in the industry with up and coming animators. So there was a competition that animators submitted their work and uh, you know dozens and dozens and dozens of people were you know show, sent in their reels and we were able to pick you know these top 6 that we really thought were exciting. 3 of which came from Utah. Um, one animation group came from Mexico, the other was by way of England, one was in Brazil. It was a really cool mix of artists who had a, a very distinct style. And then our friends, Hubble Palmer and Chris Bowman, they wrote that script knowing there was gonna be six animation animators. And so they said, oh, it would be a good vehicle to, to kind of showcase. And they set it up in the chapters with the five senses. And then we signed on because, um, you know, one of the producers, Miles Romney, he told me, and maybe it was Tori, I can't remember who told me, but someone said, we want to export films from Utah, not export filmmakers. Because so many filmmakers leave and they think, oh, we need to go, you know, chase our dreams elsewhere. But the fact is the talent pool in Utah is really cool and endless, I think. It's a big, it's a big thing. We just, Utah just celebrated its 100 year anniversary of filmmaking in Utah. So it's been around for forever. And so many things have been shot here. So it's really cool to kind of commemorate our history in filmmaking and realize, yeah, yeah, we have a lot of stories to tell. We obviously have a lot of geography to use, but Utahns have stories to tell. And they're stories that the coasts of our country don't know. And so they're new and fresh. I remember when my husband and I were at BYU, we, everyone was talking about, oh, we can't show the campus. You're trying to shoot a movie that looks like it's not on a college campus and don't ever show the Wasatch Mountains because then that makes you feel like a student film. And I look back and I giggle because you know that's what we should have been showing because that's the interesting, cool angle we could tell. And, and we really did it with Napoleon and featuring the Intermountain West you know, I, I claim Preston, Idaho is just Utah because it's just over the border, but the Intermountain West, I should say. I love that because it's usually overlooked. It's overlooked. Just yeah. show it. Show yeah. it, embrace it, love it. Mm -hmm. Your story, Katie, is more interesting than you. Your personal story is more interesting than you trying to tell some big epic uh, about clipper ships. You know, it's your story from your family and your point of view is, is interesting and cool. So tell that one. <laughs> yeah, I have a couple things that I'm trying to develop uh, animations. I, I don't have much to say. So I'm trying to develop some animations to write and, and sell to a studio and write and maybe produce or something. I don't really want to direct animation anytime soon because it's a four year commitment. But my husband meanwhile is making Minecraft in New Zealand. It's just a giant, big, fun, fun movie if you've 
ever played Minecraft, um, you're gonna love it. If you've never played Minecraft, you're gonna love it. So that that is delightful. Jack Black and Jason Momoa, Jennifer Coolidge is in it, Jemaine Clement. It's a lot of really cool people, and so it's a big, goofy, fun time. So yeah, I'm trying to get something written. I have a couple of um, indie scripts I wrote that I'm also trying to get launched so I could direct again, but it's everything's slow and it takes time. But yes, post Oscars, I've got a lot of momentum. Also, we have a really big animation that's coming out in May on Netflix. It's called Thelma the Unicorn. It's an animated musical. Um, our friend Brett McKenzie did the music on it. He's an Oscar winner for um, the Muppets. And so the music is so good. Brittany Howard of the Alabama Shakes, she stars. Um, as a little pony who wants to sing. So it's darling. Thelma the Unicorn, May 17th. It's my husband and I wrote it. He directed it with um, his directing partner. Ugh, I have so much advice for students in this field. My first bit of advice, which you heard earlier, is write what you know, create what you know. Everyone can do it. You all have phones now. Money should never be an issue. You have phones, you have friends, and I know you guys have stories. And it's why TikTok is gangbusters, because everyone has like a funny thing to tell, even if it's 10 seconds long. You just have to dig a little deeper and say, what was that thing that happened that was either really moving or horrifying or funny that happened to me in the last six months? And there's so many little tools you could do, like just write, you know, memories from your childhood, like make a list of a hundred memories and just keep writing them until you have a hundred long and you will find one perfect story. And often you could blend them all together, not all, but several together and you're like, wow, there's a theme here. And so there's a lot of little tricks you could do to kind of refresh your memory of like, what are the, what are the moments that are screen worthy? Um, so write what you know, get your phone out, get your friends out. So if you're actually the next step, I just graduated high school, what should I do? There's two paths you could do. You can do, I wanna just work in film immediately on crew, and you could go to the, um, there's a lot of places here in Utah where you put your name down and they just can, will call you and movies come to set and you could be a production assistant immediately. Yeah, you get your name out there and you could start working in film, or you can go to college and study writing, study directing. Um, Slick has some really cool uh, film classes available. U University of Utah has an amazing film pro program. BYU has a gorgeous one. That school in, in St. George has really good practical hands-on skills. Um, so all, the, all of these different places would be a great way to just, and, and what you're gonna do is you're gonna meet other people who wanna do it, and suddenly you have more crew for those little short films you're making. Um, and then realize not everyone's gonna be a writer director. There's lots of roles go into producing, go into uh, you know electrical and lighting or costuming or set design or all of the business elements of filmmaking. There's a million roles. And so get your feet wet in any way you can. Say yes when things come to town. Say yes when your friends want to do it. All the experience is beneficial.